Right now, the system works on physical switch from Acton, 5712. You can download, you can download the image, you can build the image. The continuous integration system is building it every day, anyway. It actually builds it pretty much on every, no, not for every commit. The, actually, yes, for, for, for building it, building it for every commit, testing on physical switches, it tests every day. But you have images that you can just download, or you can build them. On the website, we have instructions on how to build it. It will take about an hour on good server to actually build the full image from, from sources, from completely from sources. So those who have these specific platforms, 5712, we are enabling 6712 right now, and we will enable additional platforms. They can use it on the physical switches, but those who don't have it, and we have many people are now interested in, hey, how did they touch it? And what we say is, we actually created this additional target, which is Docker container. So with Docker image. So you can build Docker image. You just, when you download the source, you will do make configure and you will say generic x86 and then make and it builds Docker image. So you can actually try it in the container. And on the website, again, there are very sim simple steps. If you don't want to build it again, CIT publishes this image so you can just download it. 120 megabytes or something like that, you download it and you start it in a few commands on Docker. So right now what I have here, I have my laptop, um, still HP laptop, and um, VM, Ubuntu, and inside that I just downloaded yesterday the latest container, and I'm running it, and that's what we have. What we have. So, so what you can see right now, I'm in CLI, right? So it's the same CLI, very, very familiar CLI, conf t, and you're inside the configurations. If you want to configure something, feature, LLDP, and do whatever you want to do. Right, so it will configure. You can do show running. Well, for this one, I have to do show running configure. Right? And you can see the running configuration of the system. You can see startup configuration of the system. It takes a few seconds because it actually converts from JSON. It's all familiar. It's all the same. So you can do show interfaces. They are not keyword compatible to any other operating system. Right, because we don't want to get into any troubles with anybody who thinks that it's, it belongs to them. But the look and feel is the same. Right? So, and if you do question mark, you'll see the exact commands. That's not a big deal. So the look and feel is exactly the same. So this is CLI. Now, if you go to the device, you know, just logging into the IP of the, of the container, you can actually get into web UI. Right, so we wanted to have some web UI. Right now, it's mostly for monitoring. It, you cannot reconfigure anything in the, in, in the web UI, but in the future, we'll extend it as well. That's for people who have one switch, two switches, three switches. They want to manage them separately. So kind of a very modern web UI with nice graphs. It will probably be reward to D3, but it doesn't matter. Um, and again, this, this UI talks to REST API. REST API fetches from database, same information that is inside database. If you go on this web UI and you go to REST API, you will actually see REST API coming up because what we do, we, uh, we convert the schema to REST API code, but we also convert the schema into Swagger documentation of the code, so of the, of the REST API. And then we use these tools of Swagger UI, for example, that, uh, that can visualize it. So let's say that I'm going into system resource and I can see all the operations they can do. Let's say I'm doing get. And what is good is if you run the container, then you can actually try this REST API command. So you can actually do try it out. Right? It will run this, uh, the, this specific thing. And, sorry. And you will see what it actually outputs. Right? So you can see everything that is right now in the system resource. Or you can go to BGP routers or do whatever you want. Let's actually try and do it. Let's see, we have route map. Test permit 10. Let's go to route map table, and let's do get on route map. And it's returning this test route map. Right? So, and, and if we go into route map entries, and we want to fetch specific route map entries, then we'll say, as a parameter, we'll say the name of the route map was test, and the specific sequence number was 10. Let's do get, and here we go. Right, the community string, it's setting a community string. Right, so everything is inside this API, and we actually don't do any specific special work in REST API in order to expose it. But once we add it to the schema and we add the documentation, there's XML file that documents the schema, everything is auto-generated. We have documentation of the schema PDF file that goes, in, goes ahead, HTML. That one we inherit from OpenVSwitch. They already have all this stuff. 
But REST API is something that we, for example, we developed on top of it. So we, we generate this REST API. It's pretty nice REST API, so you can see that it's hierarchical, right? so, you can, so you can actually very well know the URIs. You don't need to actually discover them. Completely. You can discover, right? So it actually shows you the links and everything, but it's, um, it's very convenient CLI, so you can see REST VI, VV1, system route maps, test, route map entries 10. Right? So it's something that is, it should be convenient for, for, for people to use. So we have REST API, we have Web UI, we have CLI, which is convenient for those who are really used to CLI. Um, that's it, pretty much. That's all I had about the system. And, you know, any questions? I can take you to any point. If you want, if you want me you know, to go to code level or to anything else. What's the next chip to be supported? So Trident is already supported. Trident 2 is already supported. 6712 is Trident 2 Plus. Tomahawk obviously will be supported. So all of these are supported. Now will be supported. So HP wants to go out as as a hardened version, which will be completely open source the same way. Right? But HP will start selling support for the version that we will have would like to have. In about we are talking about June time frame. That's what we are telling everybody. But in about June time frame, we would like to get to some version that HP will be able to support, to stand behind it. Now, um, we are now talking to other vendors. So Broadcom is day one, because Broadcom was in this process from the beginning. They want to make sure that OpenSwitch supports Broadcom ASICs as is. Now, we have discussions with Kavi and Barefoot and Mellanox on them actually creating the drivers. We'll support them, we'll help them, we'll be there to actually guide them on this process, but they will have to work out the driver for them, and then once they feel it's ready, we can get it in. So... Is there any interest in going to smaller chips? There's a lot of interest in the community, right? So we see people actually asking us, hey, can I take it to this one? Can I take it to that one? So if you're talking about Broadcom uh, ASICs, you can go to the mailing list or Google, Google it now. All the mailing lists are Googleable. Everything is Googleable. Uh, guys from Broadcom actually took this action item and they think they found, what was that? Hurricane 2 or something? That is the lowest one that can be supported by open cell. So they actually are looking into it. Now, it's a community process. So if somebody is really interested in specific ASIC, contribute it, contribute the code. If all the code is open, if you will do, do the driver, you know, improve the driver so it can actually work with this specific ASIC, and we'll, we'll be happy about it. So it's, we don't want to be HP only, so it's, it's, so it's, it's open source uh, communities, right? You're not so much coming with requests for features, you're coming and basically saying, I would like to contribute this support for this feature. So it's not coming to HP and saying, hey guys, do it. Now, we will be enablers of the community. So, for example, we need, right now, code supports, all these temperature sensors, fans, and other stuff on I2C bus. And if you go to the IRC channel sub transcripts, and again, Googleable, and publish on the mailing list, you will see that yesterday we had a very big chat between Big Switch, Cumulus, and us on our IRC channel, and we discussed how to do all these drivers in, in a common way. So we don't have, so the ONL has its own model, and Cumulus has different ideas about how it should work. We have, right now, we have the, the information abstracted in YAML files. We need to find a way to support low-end ch chips, and we need to, uh, to find a convenient way as we go forward for the new modern, more modern plat platforms. Right? So if Plato has a CPI, we would like to take information from a CPI and they have a generic driver. Right? If Platon doesn't have a CPI, but still it's I square C bus, we can create YAML files, textual, nice files, just edit some registers, register IDs, and you're good, and you can go. Some platforms don't support it. Some platforms need some code level driver. So we'll probably just have this code level driver in, in, introduced for the system. So we as HP will work and will help the community to actually get this driver infrastructure in place so all these different platforms can be supported. At the end of the day, it's, it's the interest of this platform producers, whoever manufactures them, to actually create a specific driver. They will not create driver infrastructure, but they can create a driver in order to support this specific uh, open switch on their platform. So we are playing this role of enablers, of, of providing the infrastructure pieces and how we can get, actually get the, the other companies around it. Are there, are there any non-vendors right now in the community? Are there operators that are contributing, using, or both? Surprised in the way that, you know, that again, you can go to mailing list or RC channel and, and, and see. So we got some, somebody from Akamai 
that, that is interesting and, and, and tries to look around how, it, how to work it out. We had on the mailing list, we had the LinkedIn architect that is also trying to see how to, how to make use of it. Yes, so we are getting interest from different people. There are some people who are actually producing some switches, some small switches again, and they are saying, hey, we were developing you know, control plane for years and we're wasting our resources. would like to actually take this one, port it, and run it. And so, yes, there's a lot of interest from these different angles. Everybody tries to actually make use of it. And more, even more interestingly, I, I hear from pretty much everybody that they want to contribute some pieces. Generally, these users, they will not contribute protocols, but they may contribute uh, orchestration pieces. They may contribute with the pieces that takes the counters into some repositories, right? And, they, and they're willing to collaborate because it, that's not their intellectual property. That's not where they make money. So they want to collaborate on actually making it happen. So from our perspective, completely, completely supportive. Any other questions? Are you anticipating this as primarily being consumed by the hyperscale folks you mentioned at the outset, like the Googles and the Facebooks, or do you see this coming down into the enterprise? So, I don't anticipate Google and Facebook companies because there are like, what, seven, eight companies that are so big, they, they better implement their own control plane. Right? They, they just develop their own control plane, which is tightly integrated in their system. I have some good friends in my, many of these companies. They say, guys, we don't need it. <laughs> we'll have 20 engineers just working on, on our specific application, our specific way of doing it. So these seven, eight, they probably don't need us. Now there's a second bunch of companies that are, that are smaller. So they actually want to play like Facebook. They want to have the same efficiencies, but they have to work to collaborate in order to make this control plane happen. So this is one of the things that we are targeting very, very nicely. So right now, if you talk about, look at the scale outs, if you look at Facebook RFC, there's RFC that Facebook and Microsoft and Lisa, they published at some point about eBGP and how to use it. Pretty much you will see that we have all the features right now from, from that one. So we have the eBGP from Quag is completely integrated, all the different features, pretty much all completely integrated. We missing STP, just STP, just for the situation that somebody connects the cable, two ports, shortcuts, the <laughs> two ports or something like that. And it will come in next three, four months as so we'll, we'll have all this play in place. So scale out is the first, I think the biggest one. Um, and, then we are to, and, and then if you want to go down the market to other places, you need to have more and more features. So and then this will come again, this will come as well. So we would like to make it fully featured operating system with all the layer two protocols, all the layer three protocols, all this stuff. But obviously from implementation perspective, it will take more time to get to, to, to more of the lower end. And Philip, if you want to, Philip is our marketing uh, guy, so who actually, who actually defines the. So as Mike said, the first use case was really the, the scale out, so EBGP, ECMP, BFD as the layer three fabric, uh, and then we want to extend this to more of a layer two enterprise, and bring as well our uh, friend for the blade switching environment to basically leverage as well the same operating system across not just a tour but the entire blade uh, environment that HP uh, or HPE uh, sells today and then extend at one point as well to not just the edge, but the entire uh, spine as not just, again, uh, a, a fixed one, one ASIC, but uh, a distributed system. That's essentially where we're looking for the future as uh, post uh, the, the first release, which is coming in the May, June time from next year. Yeah, I will blatantly steal this, and this is a out of Greg's book, but imagine, you know, this is my personal and conversations or blogs, imagine what would happen if all the major networking vendors all put, instead of all of us putting 80% of our revenue to develop all the same features, all put that money into one operating system, right? So the possibilities here are what would happen, how much more stable would the system be? How much more, um, you know, how, how much more would you be able to consume in the enterprise space? Like there is so much possibility here. Um, and given that we've, <coughs> is it a month today that this was actually posted? About a month today? I think we're pretty, pretty far down that already, the, the vendors that are on board. Um, I'm really hoping that we have a lot more vendors get on board. You know, we'll see how that works. It's open source, so it's kind of a roll of the dice. But um, again, that's why we're trying to get out and, and put as much information as we can into your guys' hands. To, so if you guys don't ask for it, no other vendor is going to do it. Right, so this is this is part of the process of the community base starting to evangelize what's out there. 
which uh, kind of brings us to the, the last part here is, if you guys actually wanted to get this up and running, how would you do that? Right, so openswitch.net. So www.openswitch.net, that's the main website. It has three, three parts, use, develop, and participate. Right, so use if you just want to see what are the CLI commands, documentation. We are committing documentation logs and the code. If you go to the Git repository, you will see markdown documents that actually dis document everything. So, so developers have to, com to contribute, to commit documentation alongside the code. And they actually have to commit tests alongside the code as well. And by the way, I didn't touch on tests, but I'm not sure we have time enough, enough time for that. But you can read all of this at, at um, our website. So develop, how you actually develop, how you contribute stuff, how you... From opening bugs, right, and we have Taiga that we use for actually having the bugs, and you can see that we have many of them <laughs> right now filed. Right, so, and it's all open, so you know who is assigned, why assigned, open, invalid bug, you know, it's all managed in the open. Right, so IRC channel is in the open, mailing list, we are pushing. I'm working hard with all these 70, 80 engineers right now to, hey guys, you, put, you take your Internal mailing, internal discussions to the open mailing list. Even though it's maybe just you for now, just discussing it, but people will be able to Google it. People will understand what happens. People will be able to contribute once they actually see what happens and why it happens. We're aiming for complete transparency. Exactly. So bags are open, right? Here's a, we, we, we chose Taiga the, for, you know, for, 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 for the system. You can see that we replicated all this open stack infrastructure. So all the code reviews are here in, inside, inside, inside the, get it? Right, so you can see code reviews, you can see you know, what was down, you know, taken down, what was not taken down. You can see some of the, you can see what, whether it was built, some continuous integration system complained, right, or didn't complain. Let's take this, uh, for example, this one. You can see Zool verified, right? So Zool actually compiled it and ran, and ran the tests that are decided in the same repository. It was good. If Zool is taking minus one, nobody's, nobody's gonna code review it <laughs> because it's, it means that tests are failing. And so you can see all the entire process all open. Ultimately, we have Git, right? So we, we're going to mirror to GitHub, but that's not the main vehicle, just like in OpenStack because we want to use GetIt for code review. Um, so it's gonna be mirrored to GitHub, but this is the main Git that, you, that you're supposed to do. To have, you can see we have many, many repositories because everything is modular, so everything lives in different repository. And we have published lists on the website. We have published lists on maintainers. Um, who actually controls, who has the plus two uh, you know, um, permissions and stuff like that. And we want, as we go forward, as we get more people from the community, to actually start giving away the maintenance roles. So we don't want to control this project over time. We want to start actually get, get, giving it away. For example, Broadcom Demon, Broadcom Driver, already a guy from Broadcom is, is now one of the maintainers, and he works with this stuff. And so we want to start actually take, giving it away. There's some guy right now on the, on the mailing list, IRC channel, he's proposing to replace the, the CLI engine. We, we have CLI engine from Quagga, it's C-based, and he wants to develop Python-based CLI engine. And we are working on chats, and you can see all the transcripts about you know, how to make it, what's gonna be the best way, and, and what we're gonna gain from it, right? So and I assume that if, well, once it matures, and if it gets in, and everything, everything is good, he will be the maintainer of it. We, we as H, we don't want to maintain leadership, I mean, control over the system, right? So we want to enable the community and start letting it go. So we, we, we don't have to say it's HP, open switch. Um, yeah, so contributions, Git, get it, Taiga, everything is exposed, mailing list, mail, you know, IRC channels, we get in. We have weekly IRC, IRC call on Wednesdays, uh, 5 p.m. UTC. We are, we are very bad about this UTC, PST, and those <laughs> drift. But essentially, it should be 5 p.m. PST, 9, uh, 5 p.m. UTC, 9 a.m. Pacific. Weekly, we discuss whatever we want to discuss. And then we schedule additional IRC chats. We had one yesterday about these drivers. We will have another one on Monday with Big, with, uh, big Switch and Cumulus guys as well. So it's all open. We invite everybody to participate. You can finally see how the sausage is made. Whether that's a good thing or not, you'll have to decide. But. Kind of speaking of that, is there is there any central place where there's a, and I understand because it's community, it's going to be hard to do, that there's a list of things that are developed in some way that are functional versus in development versus on the roadmap as, as, to, as to what is actually implemented in the platform? Because, I mean, you've talked a lot about this is coming next phase. This is 
you know, in process now versus this is something that's solid? So right now, I think the best place, but it's not, it's not nearly the good place, right? It's on Taiga, where you see all these enhancements and everything, and you can filter them out by in assigned, not assigned, open, not open. But I agree, we probably need to provide more of the managed place where we can go at high level, not the specific user stories of enable this show command, right? But more the high level saying, this is the level of BGP support right now. This is, you know, we think it's like 50% done. We think it's like 30%. And, and we'll see it as we go forward. For example, if GoBGP, if these guys, they start integrating more and more in, in, into the system, initially it will be lower, you know, quality level or testing level, and then it will increase, and at some point, okay, it's good enough, we can actually use it, you know, together, instead, whatever, whatever we decide to do. Yes, we need to, to provide this visibility, and we are being asked by many people to actually say, hey guys, what's the roadmap? And when you're going to have this feature, when you're going to have this feature, so... In community, mostly we cannot provide um, so much commitments as we can provide more of the visibility, transparency. Right? So this is the state right now. This, this is something that we are working on, and this is something that nobody works on. Very much interest, many people are interested, nobody works on. And it provides the opportunity for external people to actually say, okay, I will actually work on this, on this piece. So we want it to, to be available not just for the potential users who are interested in when should, it, should I expect this feature, but also for the community itself. So people actually know that they can contribute on a specific area. Or no, it's, you know, we have 20 developers working on this. So it's not gonna, you're not going to make a lot of impact. And from a contribution standpoint, like I'm not a C coder, I can do Python, but, but I can contribute to, to improving documentation. So that's some of the stuff that I've already been, been looking at is um, going through some of the documentation. It's not as, as robust or accurate. There was some, some small tweaks as far as um, specific Ubuntu versions that I just couldn't get it to make on Ubuntu 15, but it works fine on 14. He's, he's polite about that, so right. uh, he couldn't build it. <laughs> so he fixed the documentation. You know, it's just, but when I went back and hit the mailing list, I, I got a response on the mailing list, I don't know, maybe within half an hour, and it was 14.04 is the version we're actually using, so now I'm going to go back in, you know, make that change, issue the pull request, documentation will roll, and now you guys don't have to go through that pain of trying this on Ubuntu 15, right? So, so there's opportunities for people who are not coders, um, just from, from a user standpoint, to be able to still contribute and to improve the process, if you're interested. Even in that scenario, though, you, you know, I guess one of us or you, whoever could pre, you know, prepackage it in a VM as an OVA, put it up there, right? And that way you have a working, a working virtual machine to test certain things. Or I think Michael covered this. So if I have another five minutes, I can, I can cover a little bit more about the containers. So we were looking initially to create OVA. I right? said, so, okay, we want to have VM. Now the trouble is that first it's pretty heavy, but B, it's more difficult to actually combine it into network topologies. Right? So you have to have ESXi or something like that and start creating connections between all this stuff. Now we are not making changes in the kernel, which, which drives us into very interesting position that we can actually use containers instead, right? So we build Docker images and we have testing framework that Python, it's, it's Mininet based. We started from Mininet and we extended to actually work with containers. So you can actually come and say in Python, add switch and here's the image of the, of the, uh, the name of the image or add switch, add switch and then add link and we'll actually connect them with VTH pair, right? So those who are familiar with Linux will create VTH pair and put it in different containers. Now you have two, two switches actually connected between them. Now you take image of Ubuntu, image of CentOS, connect to the switches and actually ping through the switch. And switch will actually do the ping because in, internally we replace the, there's no ASIC inside the container, we use open V switch itself. Now there's interesting discussion starting yesterday that barefoot guys, they want to contribute P4 behavioral emulator to actually do it for inside the container, which might be very interesting. So again, we, are, we, are, we start seeing things that we, we didn't anticipate and people from the community actually want to, to say, oh, okay, we can actually do it better in this way. But what I'm saying is you can run containers you can actually create topologies. You can actually create topology of like 10 containers easily on, on your laptop and connect them, you have full closed topology, and you can run packets between them and you can see where the BGP converges. So if you look at the BGP repository for us, you will see that the tests, the test our Quagga integration with, with always DB and everything, they will actually start container of open switch. We will start container of Quagga, Quagga itself, plain Quagga. We'll configure Quagga, we'll configure open switch, we'll We'll let them neighbor, and then we'll check whether the BGP converges. Converges, good. It means that we actually work nicely. Yeah, no, totally, totally get it. But, you know, it's just, 
I do a lot of testing on different types of machines and being able to load in a virtual box without Docker, you know, still valuable. And it's just one of those things to, you know, you know, it keeps building on you know, the test framework that has to, has to be used to test something out. I think having a flavor of it as an OVA, you know, could benefit, you know, based on target user market of, of the platform in any capacity. So there's a vagrant image that does launch into the world. No, no, no. So, so vagrant image is mostly for developers. But to build an OVA, it's going to be a trivial process. Because, oh, no, because, sure. because the way that it basically works, we basically work with root fs and then we say Docker import <laughs> this root fs And the same way, we can actually say, OK, into OVA. So it should be possible. We, we didn't use it this way. So you know, so if you want to contribute the few lines of Yocto configuration and we'll create OVA, it's possible. <laughs> uh, by the way, we are using Yocto for building this distribution. And uh, it's really good development experience, right? So, so I can build an image on my laptop again. Well, it's a powerful laptop. I can build in about an hour. I can build a full image. Right? And, and the reason is because continuous integration actually builds and, and caches in different places. So Yocto will basically compare hashtags and will download most of the binary pieces, as long as they didn't change. So if you, you modify one piece of the image, the rest of it will be basically downloaded. If you have good uh, you know, internet connection, and then it builds the image very quickly. But yes, we can get into OVAs. Again, community, you know, whoever is interested will contribute. <laughs> um, yeah. So and then the last thing that we're just trying to figure out right now is, um, there will be a Twitter account created, so we will make sure that gets out to you guys. Again, we're one month in, right? We wanted to get the, the actual infrastructure behind it, get a real product actually out there, and now we're going to start on, the, on more of the evangelization stuff. So we will get that out um, in the near future. And then uh, that will not, will probably be manned by HP, but the intention is to make sure that that is open switch specific stuff and not just a marketing Twitter handle, right? So um, really, we're trying to do our best to be good stewards of, of a community called Open Switch and not just, you know, vendors. By the way, you can see RC chat. So we just had um, our weekly. So basically you see you know, the participation of people inside this RC chat. And Biot is Barrett, he's working on the CLI engine that he wanted. And we have many different people. And Paul, he's Quagga maintainer on this RC chat. So it's, it's very active. And, and generally what, for example, I personally have subscription service that pushes push messages to me to my watch whenever I, there is some some new conversation I see chat so we generally respond very very quickly <laughs>